Nascar 9012. How are you doing today? Nice to have you show up this morning. Appreciate you being here. First in the chat. It's a toss up between sometimes you or Dearman. I am doing well. Just mixing things up just a little bit differently today. Decided to do my uh, uh, baseball player biography today and do my uh, team history live on Thursday. Um, and I'll be mixing things up at the end of the week. Um, I won't be doing a live on Saturday. I'm going to be out of town. But I will have a pre-recorded video that I'll put up that morning. Uh, when I'm done watching your stream, I'm going to get a video. Doing a video. Okay. That's cool there, NASCAR. Hopefully everything has been going well for you. I uh, just jumped on a little bit earlier today. Uh, my wife is... Uh, we're having our pastor and his wife over for dinner tonight. So we're doing a little bit of things differently today. My wife got an extra day off this week. A little bit slow where she works at the Navy Hotel. So we are going to get into our content at hand maybe a few minutes early. See if we can get one or two more other people hop in on the stream. I do see at least I do have a five thumbs up already. That's pretty good with only three people in the stream. But I know sometimes people will just give me my thumbs up and hop on board. Some people might be ready for my... Uh, because my schedule does say 10.30 a.m. each day. So then after we go over the the uh, biography for uh, one of the Hall of Famers this year, Larry Walker, and go through some of his cards I got highlighted here. I don't have a whole lot of cards for Larry Walker, but I'll highlight through some of the cards I got here. We'll open up this box of uh, Topps Heritage 2020 Baseball Trading Cards, and then I... Uh, when I was picking these up at uh, my local Walmart and stuff, um, they had some of these on clearance. Actually, they had this was the only one of the Stars and Stripes that was on clearance. So I got that at half price, which I thought, oh, okay, sure, I'll buy that. Not a super fan of USA Baseball, but I do like the styles and the way they look. It's a, like a Stars and Stripes type uh, series. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot of cards in there. It's about half of a normal blaster box. It has 35 cards, but you, uh, you can find two autographs or memorabilia cards per box on average. So I figured we'd open that up as some bonus content here today. All right. So um, I'm doing fine, just like I said a little bit ago. He said, hey, Donald, good, and you? I said, I'm fine, I'm still fine. Three minutes later. <laughs> but hopefully you are doing well, NASCAR. You're, you're the only one here chatting with me, but that's fine. We are early, and I'll probably get into the history in just about a minute or two here. That's why I wanted to hop on a little bit early today. We got some other things to get ready for our dinner uh, this afternoon. But nothing great and pressing. Uh, I, I was working on sorting some cards here before I came on to the live. Uh, working on some of my uh, 2020 Series 1 uh, subset organization. And then uh, be scouring through and making a list of what cards I'm missing for the different subsets there. As soon as uh, they come out with Series 2 and stuff, they'll have the complete sets. And then I'll order my complete set of Tops 2020 that I usually get each year. I'll get that in or go to my local Target. They usually get them in there and buy one there. So do you know what I built on my Minecraft world two days of yesterday? I don't have any clue there, NASCAR. <laughs> Uh, I'm not really a big Minecraft type person or a gamer per se. I'll play some of the different word games like Words with Friends and different things like that. But I'm not much of a gamer per se. Um, but there are a few people in, in our church, the, the youth I'll call them, that do uh, Minecraft. 
but um, that's cool. Alright, so other than that, I'm going to probably give it two more minutes at uh, 10.22. I'll get get into the, the bi uh, biography for Larry Walker. I think while we're waiting and stuff, I'll just highlight and go through uh, some of the cards I do have for Larry Walker here. Of course, Larry Walker played for, uh, I, I tried to look to see if I could find any. Saint, at, at the end of his career, he played for the St. Louis Cardinals, but he primarily played for uh, the the Montreal Expos when they were the Montreal Expos before they became the Nationals and then he played for the Colorado Rockies and I could not find any St. Louis Cardinals uh, baseball cards of his yet but I'm sure I'll be able to find some down the road to add into my Hall of Fame collection but we do have a score gold rush okay Larry Walker with the Montreal Expos um, here we go when he got his uh, Topps All-Star Gold Cup card with the Montreal Expos. Okay, for, uh, Topps 40 years of baseball. All right. Then we've got here um, 1990 Upper Deck Rookie Threats. Okay. And then we've got uh, his 1990 Fleur and his 1990 Classic card. We'll just kind of go through some Kevin's card collecting and more is in the house. How you doing there, Kevin? Second in the chat today. I'm just going through some of our player biography cards today. And then uh, you can see here where this is. Uh, I thought this was kind of a cool looking card. It almost looks like a, a, a set of spectacles. And it's it, oddly enough, it's a... Uh, I think it's a 2000, yeah, 2000 tops, tops HD. It's kind of a little bit of a thick card, not super thick, but thicker than your normal card. Um, but it's, I thought it was kind of sharp looking there because it's uh, tops HD 2020. You would almost think, oh, did that come out of a 2020 tops? Nope, that would be an interesting one, but it's just highlighting his 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases that he had in uh, 1990. So I guess that's what that card is all about there. And then we've got um, this one here, the uh, the Omega Larry Walker with the Colorado Rockies. Then we've got this one here is uh, Upper Deck 40 Man, uh, Power Chart Larry Walker. And then here is another Montreal Expo card, uh, Top Glove. Looks like this was a 1993 Flare Ultra. Okay. Then I'll go over um, these other few cards here. This is a... I believe this was a yeah, 1996 Flare Ultra. Um, this is a die cut. Larry Walker. Outfield. Outfielder for the Rockies. I'm trying to think what year this one was. I don't know. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. Can't find it right at the moment. And there's another upper deck, uh, big shots, Larry Walker. Um, stadium beam team with the Colorado Rockies. And then uh Fleer Traditions Golden Memories with Larry Walker. Some of these nice little older style shiny cards. I believe this one was, yeah, 1998. 1998 card. Yeah, it looks like an old Viewmaster toy, exactly. Uh, one of these days I should highlight, I've got an old, uh, that this is even goes back farther than uh, uh, the Viewmaster there, Kevin. It's a little device called a, a Story Viewer. It's a Story Viewer. It was their first, uh, kind of like the... Uh, View masters, but it was kind of like the early, early days from when I was a wee little kid. Um, and it kind of, when you put the two slides together, it makes it look almost three dimensional for back in the day, back in the 50s and 60s. So I know I'm dating myself there, but I couldn't resist that one. So we do have 10, 5, 25 here, and I'm going to go ahead and get into our, uh, our biography 
for Larry Walker. Okay, so we'll just leave everything set up the way it is right now, and then when we are done, um, I'll probably start off. I'll do the smaller box first. The USA Baseball 2019 Stars and Stripes Panini product, and then I'll open up a newer product, the new uh, Topps Heritage 2020 Baseball Trading Card Set. I got both these at my local Walmart. They were on discount. I went to Target yesterday, but and they did have some hanger packs. My wife was going to get a haircut, and then we had to end up coming back home because she had to make an appointment and go back at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. So that's what took place yesterday on my day off, but it was a nice, relaxing day off. I did get some sorting done and different things like that. But without further ado, let's go into the biography for Larry Walker. Okay, so Larry Kenneth Robert Walker was born December 1st, 1966. He is a Canadian former baseball, professional baseball right fielder in Major League Baseball. During his 17 career, he played with the Montreal Expos. Colorado Rockies, and the St. Louis Cardinals. In 1997, he became the only player in Major League history to register both a 700 slugging percentage and 30 stolen bases in the same season, on his way to winning the National League Most Valuable Player Award. The first player in more than 60 years to record a batting average of 360 in three consecutive seasons from 1997 through 1999. Walker also won three National League batting championships. He was inducted into Canada's Sports Hall of Fame in 2007 and the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in the class of 2009 and was named the 13th greatest sporting figure from Canada by Sports Illustrated in 1999. And this year in 2020, he was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. All right, Stevens Cards is in the house. How you doing there, Stevens Cards? Gonna sort while I listen. I do the same thing there, Steven. Stevens Cards, I do the same thing. I like sorting while I'm listening and watching other people's streams when they do it. Kind of keeps me busy and keeps me attuned to what's going on in the baseball world and uh, in my uh, baseball card collecting family out there in YouTube world. So widely considered a five-tool talent, a prodigious athleticism and instincts, Walker hit for both average and power, combined with well above average speed, defense, and throwing strength and accuracy. He was recognized as the top Canadian athlete in 1998 with the Lou Marsh Trophy. Other honors include five MLB All-Star selections, seven Gold Glove Awards, three Silver Slugger Awards, and nine Tip O'Neill Awards. His career slugging of 565 ranks 12th all-time. Walker is one of only 19 hitters in history to accomplish a 300 batting average. 400 on base percentage and 500 slugging with at least 5,000 plate appearances, and one of six whose careers began after 1960, considering advanced metrics. He is one of only three players in history to rank within the top 100 of each of batting run, batting runs, base running runs, and defensive runs saved. The others are Barry Bonds and Willie Mays. Raised in the greater Vancouver area of British Columbia, Walker spent his youth playing street hockey with consuming NHL goaltender aspirations. That dream never materialized. However, the Expos saw his baseball potential and signed him in 1984. By 1990, Walker became their starting right fielder, propelling them to the majors' best record in 1994, when that year's strike stopped their first serious World Series run. He signed with the Rockies as a free agent following the season and during a six-year period starting in 1997, was the major league batting leader 
three times while finishing second in the National League twice in 1997. He also led the league in home runs, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage while joining the 30-30 club, registering 12 outfield assists and leading his position with four double plays turned. Desiring a trade to a contending team, the Rockies sent Walker to St. Louis in the middle of their 105-win season of 2004, where he made his first World Series appearance while trying to trying or setting three Cardinals postseason records. He announced his retirement from playing baseball after Game 6 of the 2005 National League Championship Series. Following his playing career, Walker has served as a guest instructor for the Cardinals and since 2009 has coached the Canadian national team. In that time, Team Canada has competed in three World Baseball Classic tournaments and twice in the Pan American Games, winning consecutive gold medals in 2011 and 2015. All right, Frank's Card Corner's in the house. How you doing there, Frank? Nice to jump in with us here today. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? All right. Oh, yeah, by the way, Frank, I just bought my tickets for, two tickets for uh, the Nationals last night. So I am set to go. We already have our airline tickets lined up. We have our, uh, they, they just opened up the site, I guess, yesterday for buying tickets for the Nationals there in Atlantic City. So I'm set now. All I got to do is wait for the time to get here and get on the plane the end of July and head to the East Coast. So junior hockey. At the age of 16, Walker was offered tryouts with a junior single A team in Regina, Saskatchewan, and Kelowna, Kelowna, probably, British Columbia, however, was cut from both teams. Herbert, however, made the Regina Pats. Other offers Walker received were from Western Hockey League teams, including Swift Current, which he toured. After seeing substandard conditions there, he decided that he no longer wanted to pursue hockey once he arrived at the rink and subsequently focused his athletic aspirations on baseball. Then we have his amateur baseball career. The popularity of baseball in Canada during Walker's youth was minuscule. In contrast to the fall to the following, he would help spawn related to his later success with the Montreal Expos. Previously, can, Canadian baseball luminaries included Tip O'Neill, the first Canadian to win a Triple Crown. Bra- back in 1887, and Ferguson Jenkins, Canada's first selectee to the American Baseball Hall of Fame in 1991. It was Walker who would help dramatically increase the profile of the sport in a hockey mad nation. Part of the factor are Canada's short summers, which make it more challenging to play outdoors than in the United States, recalled Walker later in major Le- in his major league career. I'd never seen a fork ball, never seen a slider. I didn't know they existed. I had never really seen a good curveball. In Canada, as a kid, we'd play 10 baseball games a year, 15 tops. Some pitchers had a thing they called a spinner, but nothing like this. Baseball wasn't big. The weather wasn't against it. Nobody ever played baseball thinking about making the major leagues. He was also unaware of many of the rules, attesting to his lack of experience playing when he turned a professional. In 1984, Walker played for the Coquitlam Reds and the British Columbia Premier Baseball League. He was selected to join the Canadian team at the 1984 World Youth Championships in Kindersley, Saskatchewan. At that tournament, he caught the eye of Expo scouting director Jim Fanning after hitting a home run with a wooden bat. In contrast to all other players who were using metal bats, Fanning signed Walker for $1,500 which equated to $3,691.40 today as an 
amateur free agent owing to his relative lack of experience playing organized baseball. At that time, Canadians were not eligible to be selected through the Major League Baseball draft. While the Expos perceived Walker to be very athletic, they decided that he was very raw and that he did not initially warrant rating as a top prospect. So then, as far as his professional career in the minor leagues, Walker attended Expo's minor league spring training camp in 1985, and it was clear from the outset that pitching was a complete mystery to him. He swung indiscriminately, expecting every pitch to be a fastball, including at ones that bounced 10 feet in front of or on home plate. When the camp ended, there was still about one and a half months remaining until the start of the season, so he returned home seeking additional preparation. He joined a fast pitch softball team sponsored by a bowling alley and brought little this brought little relief. The Expos assigned Walker to the Utica Blue Sox of the New York Penn League, a Class A short season league, for his first season of professional baseball. He played third base and first base. Although he could hit fastballs well, he continued to have difficulties with the strike zone, judgment, and more sophisticated pitches. Finishing with a 223 batting average and two home runs, manager Kent Brett, who was less preoccupied with fielding a winning team than giving the athletic players opportunities to experiment, allowed Walker to stay in the lineup as a regular, in part because of his willingness to learn. Walker heard that he would be released, but Brett recalled that he was just so tough and marveled at his outstanding athleticism, freakish freakish hand-eye coordination, and mental approach. He also had 12 stolen bases. Expos hitting coach Ralph Lowe successfully lobbied for him to be sent to the Florida Instructional League. With further tutelage, relentless preparation, and sheer hard work, Walker soon developed into one of the Expos' best young prospects. He continued to make annual off-season returns to uh, FIL in West Palm Beach to calibrate and refine his approach and eventually made his home there. All right. Astros McGee, how you doing there, sir? Thanks for popping in here. All right. Da, 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 da. Everybody's saying hi to hats. All right. In his second professional season in 1986, Walker achieved his breakthrough while playing for uh, single A level clubs, the Burlington Expos and West Palm Beach Expos. He combined totals in 133 games, including a 288 average, a 397 on base percentage, and a 602 slugging percentage, 87 runs scored, 19 doubles, 11 triples, 33 home runs, and 90 runs batted in, and 18 stolen bases. Walker caught the eye of his fellow Canadians and, as a 19-year-old minor leaguer, had acquired the entourage of Canadian reporters. I know now I can hit the ball. I have a lot of confidence, even though I still strike out a lot. I swing at too many bad pitches, he contemplated, asserted West Palm Beach manager Philippe Alou. If... He keeps improving the way he has in the last 12 months. There's no telling what he could do. You have a kid with this kind of potential. They don't last long in the minor leagues. Meanwhile, the club clinched the Florida State League South Division, winning by two games over Fort Lauderdale over the Fort Lauderdale Yankees. After a promotion to Jacksonville Expos of the Southern League in 1987, Walker totaled a 287 average, 383 on base percentage, and a 534 slugging percentage, with 91 runs, 26 home runs, 24 stolen bases, three times caught stealing. He won his first Tip O'Neill Award that year as the top Canadian baseball player. He missed the 1988 season after ongoing reconstructive knee surgery for an injury while playing in the Mexican Pacific League. The Expos moved him up 
to Indianapolis Indians of the Triple A International League in 1989. There he played in 114 games and batted 270 with 68 runs scored, 12 home runs, 36 stolen bases, and six times caught stealing. All right, let me poke in the chat here again. Thanks, man. Updated your tracking number. Okay, so no worries. Doing a few extras. All right. So now we move on to the Montreal Expos, Major League debut in 1989. So it looks like he made his MLB debut the same year that Griffey did. All right, Walker made his debut with the Montreal Expos on August 16, 1989. He walked twice in the game while recording a single in his first official at-bat off Mike Lacoste of the San Francisco Giants. Walker's first season totals included a 170 batting average, 264-0 on-base percentage, and a 170 slugging in 56 plate appearances. Montreal fans gave him the nickname Booger. <laughs> Early major league career in 1990 through 1992. Ranked number 42 on Baseball America's list of top prospects in advance of the 1990 season, the Expos never optioned Walker back to the minor leagues. Instead, he became their regular right fielder following Hubie Brooks' departure via free agency. Patrolling an outfield which at times featured Tim Raines, Marquise Grissom, both ultra fleet base stealers and well accomplished hitters, Walker batted 241 with a 326 on base percentage and a 434 slugging percentage for a 112 OPS plus. In the first full season, he also hit 19 home runs with 21 stolen bases and produced 3.4 wins above replacement war. He placed seventh in the National League. Rookies of the Year balloting, and one of the few Native Canadians to ever play for the Expos. Walker became a role model for thousands of young Canadian baseball players. Over the next four seasons, Walker combined to hit 293, 366, and 501 for a 134 OPS with an average of 20 home runs, 19 stolen bases, excellent defense plus 10 runs per year and a 4.5 war he became another in the succession of montreal's great outfielders he never appeared in more than 143 games spending significant time on the disabled list in 1991 and 1993 while playing on olympic stadium's notorious artificial turf product perceived to create excessive stress on knees, accelerating injuries to players like former Expo Andre Dawson. In 1991, Walker appeared in 39 games at first base, including Dennis Martinez's perfect game. On July 28th, a 2-0 victory versus the Los Angeles Dodgers. In that contest, Walker hit the only RBI driving in Dave Martinez on a triple and scored the second run on an error. He was involved in 17 of 27 outs, 16 putouts, and one assist. Approximately one quarter through the 1992 season, the Expos made a Lou manager at the major league level, touching off a period of heightened success that lasted the rest of Walker's time in Montreal. In the July 4th contest versus the San Diego Padres, he fielded a ground ball to right field and threw out speedy shortstop Tony Tony Fernandez at first base. Walker was named to his first All-Star game, debuting as a pinch hitter in the fourth inning for Greg Maddox and producing a single. Walker was also selected in his first home run derby, hitting four home runs. For the 1992 season, Walker batted 301, 353, 506, and rated 10 runs above average while fielding, with 16 outfield assists for a total value of 5.4 on his war. He won his first 
both of a Gold Glove and Silver Slugger Award and became the first and only Canadian to win the Expos Player of the Year Award. Walker received consideration for the Most Valuable Player Award for the first time in 1992, finishing fifth in the National League. Pop over to the chat here for a second. Okay, so now we move on to the 1993 and 1994 seasons. In the 1993 Expos reached a rare watermark, winning 94 games. A core of immense young talent propelled the club, including Grisham and a rising Moses, Moises Alou, son of manager Felipe. Complimenting Walker in the outfield, Ken Hill and Jeff Facero in the starting rotation, and John Wetland and Mel Rojas anchoring the bullpen. An impossible finish to the regular season, including a record of 30-9, and nine, catapulted Montreal to a second-place standing with a 94-68 and 68 record, thus nearly matching the club record of 95 wins set in 1979. Now the delight of the Montreal fans who had watched the league, the team struggle through decades of futility, excitement in Canada began to crescendo over the prospect of the first ever All-Canadian World Series. As the Toronto Blue Jays were defending champions in 1993 and repeated that in October, Walker batted 265 with 22 home runs and six 86 RBIs, uh, setting then a career highs of 80 walks, 20 intentional walks, 29 stolen bases, and a 371 OBP. He won his second Gold Glove Award. Before the start of the 1994 season, the Expos seeking to replace departed ace Dennis Martinez in the starting rotation acquired a young reliever in Pedro Martinez who the Los Angeles Dodgers had cast doubt over his potential as a starter and pitched him out of the bullpen. One amusing moment materialized on April 24th while playing the Dodgers in Los Angeles and Martinez starting. With one out in the third inning, Walker caught a Mike Piazza fly ball and innocently handed it to a young fan, six-year-old Sebastian Napier, thinking it was the third out of the inning. Then he quickly noticed that Jose Offerman, already on base, was running at full speed. Walker managed to receive, (laughs) retrieve the ball from Napier and held Offerman to third base. Embarrassed, Walker admitted that he told the little kid that maybe next time I'll give him a ball when there are three outs instead of two. Everybody around him was laughing. Where Offerman was stationed made little difference as Tim Wallace homered on the next pitch from Martinez for two runs. True to his word, when the Expos assumed the the field in the bottom half of the fourth inning, Walker gave Napier a signed ball, inducing a standing ovation. From June 1st forward, Montreal transformed into the dominant club in the National League, going 46-18 and until the players' strike halted the season on August 11th. In turn, they produced the most successful season in franchise history in terms of winning percentage at 649 as they attained a major league best of 74-40 record. Walker was suspended four games starting June 24th for inciting a bench-clearing brawl by charging the mound in a game against Pittsburgh. He paced for new levels production in spite of a shoulder injury in late June that confined him to first base for the remainder of the season. He easily accelerated past his previous career highs set in 1992 with a 322 batting average, a 394 OBP, and a 587 slugging percentage, including an eminency of his first 100 RBI year. He finished with 86 RBIs, 150 OPS+, and a league-leading 44 doubles. 
The latter two figures were also new career highs. He was 6th in the league in RBI, 7th in war, 4.7, offensive win percentage at uh, 739, and OPS, and 8th in the batting and slugging percentage. He placed 11th in the National League MVP voting. Perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the Expos' transcendent season was that they did so with the second lowest payroll in baseball. However, as the team lost millions of dollars in revenue from 29 canceled home games and playoffs, General Manager Kevin Malone was given orders to drastically reduce payroll. The club dealt away their young stars, including declining to offer arbitration to Walker as they, as such, he was granted free agency. Alright, pop in the chat again quick. Enjoying three days off. I remember that game. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. So now on to the Colorado Rockies. Walker signed a four year contract with the Colorado Rockies worth nearly $22.5 million. Uh, $37.8 million today, the largest agreement since the strike. The average annual value equated to more than $5.6 million, $9.4 million today, up from the uh, four million twenty-five thousand. Uh, the Expos paid him the year prior. From Olympic Stadium to Coors Field, Walker transitioned into the most benevolent hitting environment since World War II. Nonetheless, even after mathematically adjusting for stadium and altitude advantages, the production during his rocky years consistently rivaled other hitters whose accomplishments came in settings of great difficulty. So then we have the 1995 and 1996 seasons in his Rockies debut and inaugural game of Coors Field on April 26th versus the New York Mets. Walker doubled three times, including one that tied the score with two outs in the ninth, resulting in an 11-9 extra innings win. On May 7, 1995, he hit his 100th career home run versus Hideo Nomo of Los Angeles. Walker attained new career highs with 36 home runs and 10 and 101 RBIs, reaching both 30 home runs and 100 RBIs for the first time in his career. In spite of missing 13 games of a season shortened by the strike that had begun a year before, his rate numbers were 306, 381, and 607, and his average club scored 5.4 runs per game. His OPS plus fell about 20% from the year before to 131, and Walker ranked second in the National League in home runs, tied with Sammy Sosa, slugging extra base hits with 72, total bases 300, at bats per home run 3.7, and hits by pitch 14. Third in OPS with 988, and seventh in runs scored with 96 and RBI. He plays seventh in the National League MVP voting, his second time in the top 10. One of a quartet of Rockies players who became known as the Blake Street Bombers, Walker, Dante Bichette, Benny Castilla, and former Expos teammate Andres Galarga. Each combined, each contributed at least 30 home runs in 1995. The Rockies simultaneously won the first ever National League wildcard berth under the new postseason format and pl first playoff appearance in franchise history in just their third season of play. Walker collected three hits and 14 at bats in the National League Division Series versus the Atlanta Braves. He hit his first career postseason home run off Tom Glavin in the sixth inning of a 7-4 Game 2 loss. The Braves defeated the Rockies in four games. Walker primarily played center field in 1996, 54 of 83 total games in a season cut short by injury. In the May 21 games 
against the Pittsburgh Pirates, he doubled, tripled, and hit a pair of two home runs to drive in a career-best six runs in a 12-10 win. He set a club record with 13 total bases in one game. The next day, also against the Pirates, he set an MLB record with six consecutive extra base hits. On May 26th, Walker was selected for his first MLB Player of the Week award. He missed more than two months of the 1996 season due to a fractured clavicle. That occurred in a collision with an outfield fence. He hit 393 at Coors Field and 142 on the road. Right. Right, nothing new in the chat there. Most Valuable Player Award in 1997. The, Colorado, the, the Rockies commenced the 1997 season on the road, and thus Walker started a reversal of poor fortunes away from Coors. He hit two home runs in the season opener series against the Reds in Cincinnati. On April 15th, he hit three more versus the Expos in Montreal for his first career three home run game. The second landed a near a homemade signing sign reading Boogerville. After the third, fans cheered Walker for the hat trick in recognition of his former dream of playing hockey professionally. His first week accomplishments included a 440 batting average with six home runs and 25 at bats, and the NFL and the National League Player of the Week award for the second time on April 6th. He concluded the month of April batting 456 with 41 hits, 29 runs scored, 11 home runs, 29 RBIs, 7 stolen bases, a 538 OPS, and a 911 slugging percentage, and a 1.449 OPS. He set Major League records for March through April for both OPS until surpassed by Barry Bonds in 2004 and runs scored until surpassed by Bryce Harper in 2017. Walker named, was named National League Player of the Month for the first time. Walker set out an interleague game out Oh, he sat out an interleague game on June 12th versus the Seattle Mariners. Former Expos teammate Randy Johnson, a left-handed pitcher standing six foot ten inches and one of the most intimidating players in sports history, was scheduled as the starter. I faced Randy one time in spring training, and he almost killed me. Walker explained of of the the rationale. He collected his 1,000th career hit and 108th of the season on June 20th against Andy Ashby of San Diego. However, the decision to not bat against Johnson instigated a debacle as one of the indelible moments of Walker's career one month later in the 1997 All-Star Game. This time, Walker faced Johnson, who theatrically threw over his head ever adaptable, Walker placed his batting helmet backwards and switched sides in the batter's box to stand right-handed for one pitch. He ended the at-bat by drawing a walk. The innocent mom- the incident momentarily drew mirth and laughter from players in both dugouts, fans, and announcers, and comparisons to Johnson pitching against John Crook in the 1993 All-Star Game, in which he also threw over his head. In spite of gamering and reputation of avoiding Johnson, Walker batted 393, 11 hits, and 28 at-bats against him in his career, nearly double the rate of all left-handed batters at 199. During the All-Star break, Walker anticipated participated in the Home Run Derby, placing second with 19 home runs. Both he and Tony Gwynn of the Padres, also a selectee that year's All-Star game, were batting near 400 and right fielders for teams in the National League West division. They were jointly interviewed, as batting 400 is one of the most difficult achievements of all sports 
asked just how challenging it is, Gwen, known to be a very studious hitter, elaborated with what he later termed a complete dis dissertation. Walker responded, I don't know anything about that stuff. I just hit the ball. When neither player wound up achieving the statistic over any full season, Gwen won that year's National League batting championship, and Walker was second. Continuing his remarkable season, Walker batted 402 as late as July 17th. On September 12th, Walker was batting a league leading 371 with 43 home runs. No National League player had ever simultaneously met, marshaled those totals. He then ex experienced another power surge hitting home runs in four consecutive games for a total of five in that span, including the 199th and 200th of his career in San Diego on September 17th. He injured the right elbow while swinging at the pitch that was pre-flight to his 49th home run in the Rockies, 160th game, forcing him out of the last two games. In spite of Walker's magnificent season, the Rockies were unable to capitalize, missing the playoffs with a 83-79 and record. The career season for Walker was 1997, when he hit 366 with 49 home runs, 130 RBIs, 208 hits, 143 runs scored, 33 stolen bases, with a 720 slugging percentage, a 1.172 OPS, 409 total bases, and a 9.8 war. He won the National League MVP award, thus becoming the first Canadian player to win the MVP in Major League Baseball. The home run and stolen base totals placed him in the 30-30 club. He became and remains the only player to have reached at least 30 stolen bases and a slugging percentage of 700 in the same season. The second with at least 45 home runs and 30 stolen bases and the fifth with 40 and 30. The 9.8 war produced is tied for 64th highest single season total among positions players in Major League history, per BaseballReference.com. Walker's production slotted him with four hits, 10 RBIs of winning the first batting triple crown in 60 years. He led the Major Leagues in war, slugging, OPS, total bases, runs created, 187, and adjusted batting runs with 71. Adjusted batting wins at 6.7, extra base hits, 99, and offensive winning percentage of 857, the National League on base percentage of 452, and at bats per home run. Also, Walker's 409 total bases were most in the National League season since Stan Musial gained uh, 429 in 1948 is tied with Lou Gehrig and Roger Hornsby for the 18th highest in MLB history. Walker's season marked the 23rd occasion in MLB history. A batter reached 400 total bases and the first time in National League since uh, Hank Aaron's 400 in 1959, combined with a uh, 12 outfield assists and league leading of both uh, a 992 fielding percentage and four double plays turned. Walker's 1997 season remains one of the finest all time, all around performances in recent baseball history. Further, he won a series of other awards, including the Player's Choice Award for National League Outstanding Player, the Baseball Digest Player of the Year Award his 7th Tip O'Neill Award, and 3rd Gold Glove, 2nd Silver Slugger, and 1st Rockies Player of the Year Award. In honor of Canada's 150th anniversary of Confederation on July 1, 2017, the Sports Network named Walker's Achievement of the MVP Award among the nation's most ionic sports moments. The 49 home runs set 
a single season club record for Colorado, Walker's production held up well on the road, including nine more home runs than at Coors Field. A 346 average, 29 home runs, and 62 RBIs in 75 games. Other season single season franchise records Walker set. In 1997, were war, slugging percentage, OPS, run score, total bases, adjusted OPS+, plus, offensive win percentage, and at-bats per home run. All right. Anyone new? Paul D. Paul D.'s in the house. How you doing there, Paul? Nice to have you join us. We've got four people on the stream. That's fine. First batting title, make sure you give me my thumbs up if you can, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up on the stream. Or as some say, thummies up, thummies up. <laughs> First batting title in 1998. Although he resisted the right elbow, or rested the right elbow in the offseason, Walker aggravated the injury while playing golf the following January. The elbow soreness kept him at one home run through April of 1998 season. He produced a season-high high 20-game hitting streak from May 4th through May 25th and the second longest in the National League, batting 342 in that span, which was actually worse than his average at season's end. In that streak, Walker hit a pitch Pinch hit Grand Slam on May 6th versus Jerry Spraldon in of the Philadelphia Phillies. The Rockies placed Walker in the disabled list for two weeks in June due to the elbow soreness, and he managed to hit 331 through the first half of the season. Walker started the All-Star game for the second consecutive season playing center field and batting seventh. He drew a walk and a scored run. Immediately following the All-Star break, Walker collected six hits in the, his first 32 at-bats, bringing his average to 314, its lowest since April 5th. During a seven-game homestand spanning from July 23rd through the 28th, he produced 15 hits and 27 at-bats, with three doubles, two triples, four home runs, and nine RBIs, raising his average from 319 to 340. He surged from 10th to second place for the batting crown. From August 19th to the end of the season, he hit 440, 78 for 177. He endured back spasms toward the end of the season, starting on starting in nine of the team's final 17 games. Walker produced a 402 second half batting average. After 1997, he never reached 500 at bats again, as various injuries cut short each season. With a 363 batting average, he became the first Canadian born player to win a major league batting title in the 20th century. The first to do so in the National League and broke Gwynn's streak for four consecutive National League batting championships. Walker won the Lou Marsh Trophy in 1998 as Canadian Athlete of the Year after finishing runner-up the previous year to Formula One champion Jacques, Jacques Villanueva. Uh, further, Walker won that year's Lionel Conacher Award as the top male Canadian athlete the ESPY Award for Best Major League Player, and a Tip O'Neill Award. He also received his fourth gold glove. Oh, Dearman did. Dearman is in the house. There you go. I got a t Walmart 2020 10 and got a Francisco Lindor bat card. That's cool there, Dearman. That, that's a nice card to get. All right, moving on now to the 1999 season. Plagued by injuries for the last several years of his career, Walker nevertheless continued to produce. He missed the first week of the 1999 season with a strained rib cage. On April 28th, he hit three home runs against the St. Louis Cardinals for his second career 
home run game while contributing eight RBI an eight RBI game in a nine seven win. Walker hit safely in twenty one consecutive games from April twenty fifth to May nineteen, making that the second occasion since nineteen eighty seven reigning batting champion had achieved a hit streak of at least twenty games. On May nineteenth Uh, Walker collected four hits versus the Cincinnati Reds to raise his season average to 431, but the Rockies were on the losing end of a 24-12 final, tied for the fourth highest run scoring output in MLB history. Wow, 36 runs. For the month of May, Walker batted 392, a 647 slugging, and 40 hits. In 102 at bats. From June 18th to 23rd, Walker and tied Bichette's club record by homering in five consecutive games. The following day, Walker tied another club record held by Galarga with his sixth consecutive multi hit game. In June, Walker played in 25 games and batted 385, a 318 slugging percentage, 10 home runs. 30 RBIs, 25 uh, scored, 35 hits, 10 walks, and 9 strikeouts. On July 8th, Walker hit his 250th career home run versus Chan Ho Park of the Dodgers. Walker batted 326 in July with 15 walks and 10 home runs. Carrying a 382 First half average, Walker batted 390, 189 hits, and 484 at bats from ni- from the 1998 All Star break to the same point in 1999, the equivalent of a full season. He was named to his third consecutive All Star team, played at Fenway Park in Boston. He stayed in right field and batted second. He was one of the strikeout victims of former Expos teammate Pedro Martinez, who became the first strikeout, the first three, the first to to strike out the first three batters of an All-Star game. In July 19th contest versus the Oakland Athletics, Walker became the second player to homer in the Plaza reserve seating of one of the upper decks of the Oakland Coliseum, following Mark McGuire, McGuire, who had done so three seasons earlier. On July 27th, Walker recorded his 100th and 101st career outfoot outfield assists. He hit the game-winning home run August 18th versus John Rocker of Atlanta for his 1,400th career hit. Walker closed his season by hitting safely in 12 consecutive starts, including multiple hits in the final six. Limited to 15 games and 49 plate appearances in September, Walker batted 513 with 20 hits and 39 at-bats, 10 runs scored, 5 doubles, 4 home runs, 13 RBIs, 9 walks, and 2 strikeouts. For the season, Walker batted 379, setting a Rockies record, and the fourth highest since Ted Williams in f- Ted Williams hit 406 in 1941. While leading the major leagues in batting for a second time, Walker also led the major leagues in offense with a percentage a offensive win percentage of 838, on-base percentage of 458, slugging percentage of 710, and an OPS of 1.168, sometimes referred to as the slash stat triple crown. He became the seventh player to win the previous 60 years to lead the league in each of average, OBP, and slugging in the same season, and first since George Brett in 1980. The last National League player to lead the majors in each of the three slash stat categories was Stan Musial in 1943. Walker also hit 37 home runs, 115 RBIs, and just 438 at bats, stole 11 bases in 15 attempts, and registered 12 outfield assists. 
per the Elias Sports Bureau, Walker's 461 average at Coors is the highest home batting average since ESB began tracking home road splits in 1974 and 43 points higher than any players in that span. In 66 games at Coors Field, Walker also hit a 531 OBP, 879 slugging, 26 home runs, 70 RBIs, 107 hits, 72 runs, 9 stolen bases, 31 walks, and 17 strikeouts. In 273 plate appearances on the road, he batted 286, 894 OPS, 11 home runs, and 35 strikeouts. He won his fifth gold glove and was selected as Rockies Player of the Year for the second time. He placed 10th in the National League MVP balloting. Following the season, he went under, underwent knee surgery. So Walker produced a 10.8 war combined in 1998-1999 while missing at least 30 games in both season seasons and from 1997 to 1999 he hit 314 410 and 592 away from Coors Field his aggregate batting average at 369 in that same time he became the player the first player since Al Simmons from 1929 to 1931 to hit at least 360 in each of three consecutive seasons. Walker signed a six-year, $75 million uh, contract extension after the 1999 season. He was named as the ninth top male athlete of Canada's Athletes of the 20th Century list compiled in 1999, uh, trailing only Ferguson Fergie Jen- Jenkins, number seven, among baseball players. Sports Illustrated listed Walker as the 13th greatest sport sporting figure in Canadian history in 1999. So then we have the 2000 and 2001 seasons. While missing a major portion of the two of 2000 with a stress fracture in the right elbow, Walker spent two stints in the National League. He recorded an outfielder's choice on April 16th versus St. Louis, leading to a forecast at second base on April 19th versus the Arizona Diamondbacks. He collected his 1,448th career hit to pass Jeff Heath as the major's all-time hit leader for Canadian-born players. Walker completed his longest hitting streak of the season at eight games from April 21st through May 1st. In that time, he batted 471, 16 for 34, with three home runs and nine RBIs. On May 13th, the team received diagnostic results revealing he had a stress reaction irritation in his right elbow and placed him on the DL, which he missed 23 games. To that point, he was batting 347. Walker returned from the disabled list, notably weakened, batting 286 over his final 57 games of the season. He homered to drive in his 888th career run on July 1st versus the Oakland Athletics, passing health passing Heath for the all-time leading among Canadian board players. He also collected his 1,500th career hit in that game. On August 10th through the 17th road trip, he collected five outfield assists. On September 8th, he had surgery on the elbow after it was revealed to be troubled with soreness. Walker appeared in 87 games and batted 309 with nine home runs and 51 RBIs. He led the club with 10 outfield assists, eight from right field and one from and two from left field. He ended the season as Canada's all-time leader in hits, doubles, home runs, RBIs, and runs scored in the major leagues. First baseman Todd Helton, Walker's teammate on the Rockies from 1998 until his trade to the Cardinals in 2004, won the MLB slash stat triple crown in 2000, making them the first teammates in history to accomplish the feat in consecutive years. 
It also gave the Rockies four consecutive MLB batting champions in 1998 through 2001. Helton eventually succeeded Walker as the Rockies' career franchise leader in a number of statistical categories. From prior to the 2001 series, Walker committed a new fitness regimen, including enlisting a personal trainer. He displayed restored health in his right arm on opening day, throwing out Fernando Vina of the Cardinals at home plate. Walker opened the season with a 10-game streak from April 4th through 19th, 425, with six home runs and 16 RBIs. From April 17th to May 23rd, Walker safely reached base in 31 consecutive games. He batted 375, 11 home runs, 30 RBIs during the month of April to become the first player in National League history to hit at least 11 home runs in the month of April twice. On May 22nd, he swiped his 200th career base and he scored his 100th career uh, run on June 3rd versus San Francisco. Walker was elected to play in the 2001 All-Star Game starting his desig- as the designated hitter and batting fifth. On August 5th, he hit his 300th career home run coming against the Pittsburgh Pirates in a 5-4 loss. He hit his 204th home run for Colorado on August, passing Castilla, for the franchise record. On September 5th, he took the lead for good and the batting title from former Expos teammate Moises Alou by scoring five runs on September 24th versus San Diego. Walker tied his career high and the Rockies franchise record. On the season, Walker tied Ichiro Suzuki for the major league leading and batting at five. 350 for his third batting title with 38 home runs, 123 RBIs, and 497 at-bats. He did not reach his personal goal of 150 games, but did play in 142 and managed 601 plate appearances as his highest total since 1997. Also, he finished in the top 10 in numerous other categories, including an OBP of 449, Third offensive win percentage of 831, fifth in slugging with 663, sixth in OPS with 1.111, adjusted OPS of 160, at bats per home run 13.1, and a war of 7.8, and ninth in home runs. He led the majors with a 406 home batting average and in left hander versus right left-hander batting average of 378. He won another gold glove that year. So then, as far as his next stage, he went to be with the St. Louis Cardinals, and he had a World Series appearance in 2004. On August 6, 2004, Colorado sent Walker, who was batting 324, in 38 games to the St. Louis Cardinals with minor leaguer pitcher Jason Birch and two players to be named later. On August 11th, those players were identified as Chris Narvarison and Luis Martinez. Customarily, the Rockies' number three hitter, Walker, became the Cardinals' number two hitter. He hit behind a speedy Tony Womack and in front of three, four, five hitters, of Jim Edmonds, Albert Pujols, and Scott Rowland, who combined for 122 home runs and 358 RBIs that year. Walker made his Cardinals debut on August 8th, playing the New York Mets, and appeared as a pitch hitter and struck out in the seventh inning. He drew a walk from Mike Stanton in the ninth inning and scored a game-winning run on Yadier Molina single. Walker appeared in 44 games for the Cardinal Powerhouse that won a Major League Best 105 games, batting 280, uh, 393 OBP, 560 slugging, and 11 home runs. In three playoff rounds in 2004, Walker combined to hit 
293, 379, and 707, with a pair of home runs in each tournament, setting a franchise record for home runs hit by left-handed batter in one postseason. Walker made his playoff debut with the Cardinals in Game 1 of the NLDS versus the Dodgers, homering twice and scoring four runs in an 8-3 Cardinals win. He became the first Cardinals with a multi-home run game in NLDS play. In Game 1 of the National League Championship Series versus the Houston Astros, he was a home run short of hitting for the cycle. St. Louis advanced to the World Series to face the Boston Red Sox. The first and only of Walker's playing career in his debut, he collected four hits and five at-bats with a home run and two doubles. His four-hit outing tied the Cardinals' World Series record, becoming the seventh overall and first to so to do so since Lou Brock of 19. 19- 67. Boston won the series by sweeping St. Louis. The Cardinals struggled to hit batting with 190 with a 562 OPS, while Walker batted 357 with a 1.366 OPS. His two home runs accounted for only two hit by the entire Cardinals team. In the 2004 season, Walker scored 21%, 14 of 68 of Cardinals runs. And then here we have his final season was in 2005. Walker also contributed to the 2005 National League Central Division Champions winner of 100 games. A herniated disc in his neck prevented him from turning his head to the left on June 7, 2005. He received a second cortisone shot to alleviate the pain, with eight previous surgeries and now playing in pain that impeded his ability to continue to produce at a high level. Walker signaled that he would retire from the game after the season. He had 12 million... $12 $12 million team option for 2006. In 100 regular season games, Walker batted 289, 384, and 502, good for a 130 OPS+. Plus. His playoff effort yielded much less success than the year prior, combining to collect three hits in 28 at bats in two rounds. The Astros defeated the Cardinals in the NLCS in the last game ever played at Bush Memorial Stadium. The second iteration of Bush Stadium. Walker doubled in the sixth inning in a elimination game six versus Roy Oswald for his final major league hit, but struck out in the ninth inning versus Dan Wheeler. It his final at bat, he retired shortly after the game. Walker ended his career 50th on the Major League Baseball's all time home run list with 383. So there we have it. There is your uh, history for your biography for Larry Walker and Also, one last note we have here is his National Baseball Hall of Fame. Walker became eligible for induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 2011. During his first year of eligibility, he received 118 votes, 20 or 20.3% of all ballots cast. The threshold for entry is 75%, with a 34% of voters supporting enshrinement in 2018. Walker's personal high high to date had previously yet to receive more than 22.9% of the vote. As Jay Jaffe noted, Walker has had difficulty gaining more support for elections as he is in something of a perfect storm. Low counting statistics relatively are already elected Hall of Famers playing a large part of his career during the steroid era and taking more turns at the plate at Coors Field than anywhere else. One perception of Coors Field is that it inflates batting statistics far beyond a hitter's true ability. Jaffe wrote, 
that he found Walker to be well qualified for induction into the Hall of Fame, contending that even though his counting stats were low for the era, his all-round greatness added considerable amount of hidden value that made up for lost time. Of all player, of all who played right field as their primary position, Walker's 72.7 career baseball reference war ranks 10th all-time, and all nine ahead of him are in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. A top-heavy list highlights five achievers over of over 100 war and another who accumulated at least 90. Three of the most accomplished hitters in history are there. Ruth with a 163.1, Aaron with a 142.6, and Stan Musial with a 128.1. Three of the next four are Walker, including Gwen, have also been elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, wrote Tom Verducci of Walker's American Hall of Fame credentials. The difference between playing in Denver and all other locations, including producing 98-point difference in average, 380 versus 282, and 49% higher home run rate, were bothersome. Further, the lack of longevity kept him from election. As no right fielder with fewer than 2,500 games played, or 2,500 hits has been selected. John Bratton noted that baseball prose- for baseball prose- prospectus in 2002 that Walker had Hall of Fame talent and named him among the elite National League outfielders, Coors Field or not. But without Hall of Fame credentials due to lack of longevity from injury, Bratton compared him to a number of failed hopefuls with similar statistics, including Dick Allen, who accrued impressive rate statistics adjusted for ERA and an MVP award. However, the comparisons only extend to batting accomplishments, leaving out defensive and base running. Noted of Walker's proper swing balance by the authors of Lau's Laws on Hitting, don't be fooled into thinking that all of his glowing statistics are the result of playing at Coors Field. He posted some superb numbers in Montreal, too. Former AL batting champion George Brett offered on playing at Coors Field. You have to adjust to what the ballpark offers you. The reason I hit the way I do at Kaufman is Kaufman Stadium, the big outfield and the turf. You play half your games there. Mike Piazza, who finished second to Walker in the 1997 National League MVP voting, commented the same year that Walker is a great player having a great year. He plays in a great hitter's park, and I think it's unfortunate that some of the players don't get the credit they deserve because of that. Walker was elected into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 2020 balloting while garnering 76.6% of the vote in his 10th and final year on the ballot. He became only the second Canadian elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame after the 1991 election of Ferguson Jenkins. Walker is also the first member of the Rockies to be elected. He created a sensation by wearing a NASCAR-style SpongeBob SquarePants shirt during the video interviews to commemorate, commemorate the announcement of his election, citing that he was not optimistic he would be elected to the Hall of Fame. Both Amazon and Walmart in its online apparatus were found to have sold out of the shirt shortly after the interview aired. (laughs) So there we have it. Larry Walker's biography for and then he did make it into the Hall of Fame so he'll be in Cooperstown this summer for his induction into Officially the Hall of Fame. Paul. Paul D. All right. So nothing new. Did I miss anything there? Hey, Paul. Stevens cards. Okay. So let me go ahead and shift these cards out of the way for now. For Larry Walker here. 
then we'll leave some of these stands on the ready here in case we get some hits out of these two boxes here let me reposition and get everything in place here all right hopefully you guys are having a good day we still have four people hanging out with us here uh, let's see dear man nice pull on that lindor bat okay so there we go let me readjust everything here make sure i keep track of this that here so we're going to open up this stars and stripes first see what we can find in here and then we'll save the best for last the, the 2020 tops we'll see okay so hopefully you guys are having a good start to your week as i am i don't think i've ever ordered up it or opened up any U usa baseball cards before so this will be a new one on me i've seen the cards before in the past but just have never i like how they just they make it look like it's a big box and then you do get five cards per pack and six packs five six seven seven packs for 35 cards so let's see if we can pull out some fire in this stars and stripes product here oh that was my printer turning off i was wondering what was beeping underneath here for me So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into these baseball stars and stripes. For those that aren't familiar with this one, like I did, wasn't that's for sure. March of 2019, I guess maybe the, uh, March is when they release these Panini products. It does list everything here. It's a 100 card baseball set. Um it says uh, 97 longevity base and three longevity checklists are included in this set. So without further ado, let's see if we can open this. Okay. These are those tough packs, huh? Okay. All right. That's what scissors come in handy for. Make sure good to go there. All right, we'll leave that on standby there. How's that sound? Anybody out there opened up these cards before? Oh, that was pretty nice looking. Let's see who we got here longevity um, 18U national team Corbin Carroll. Corbin Carroll. Um, Riley Green. What's that say? It says Longevity 18U National Team. All right. Let's see who else we find in here. Drew Romo. Drew Romo. Does it say on the backs what teams they're associated with or anything? Just says their po position. Hmm. Just figured, okay, it's a different kind of box. Let me pick one of these up and see what we get in it. Drew Romo there. All right, next one we have here is Seth Deer. I suppose, you know, we could have a uh, somebody that might have made it up into the majors this year. We'll see as we go along here. And then uh, Brennan Malone. Brennan Malone. Oh, I definitely don't recognize any of these names, but you never know. They could be coming up through through the leagues. Maybe this year we're going to see some of these guys. Um, instead of trying to fight with this pack the way it is, I'm going to just trim off the top there and pull these cards out. That way I don't bend any of the cards in case we get somebody good in here. You guys can let me know if you've heard of any of these players. Uh, Osef Beer. 
Let's see. Sold by weight, not volume. <laughs> so Seth Beer, you said, is with the Diamondbacks, huh? Really? There we go. I'll put Seth Beer on front for you there, Kevin. So who do we got next here? We've got, uh, looks like Dominic Fletcher. Dominic Fletcher. Um, Charlie Som. Charlie Som. Looks like a catcher. Oh, there we go. 2019 checklist. USA Baseball. Oh, okay. They put the numbers on the back there. So what do we got? Team card. We got C.J. Abrams. Carol Cornello Crow. Nice little information there. Let's see here. What do we got here? Dominic Fletcher. Justin Colon. All right. So that one there, we ended up getting one of the checklists. I'll just kind of place these here and don't know for sure if we're going to get a big hit or not. So is Corbin... Or are they both on the Diamondbacks organization now? There, Kevin. Who'd you say? Corbin Coral? Corral? Oh, Cor Corbin Coral. Oh, must have been over in this pack here. Oh, Corbin Carroll. Okay, there we go. So these two are both with the Diamondbacks now there, Kevin? That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll send those your way because I don't have any clue who these guys are. <laughs> That's for sure. First stack, yeah. Okay. Here, let me do that real quick. I'll do that real quick so I'll remember... Who these, who these two go to? I'll send these your way there, Kevin. Okay, we've got uh, Seth Beer and Corbin Carroll. They'll be getting ready your, your Patreon package here soon, and I will send it together with that. So who do we got next here? Oh, wow, we got... We got it. So Drew Parrish. Drew Parrish. Um, then we've got Nico Horner. Nico Horner. All right. Uh, I'm going to go from the back only because... Oh, there we go. Casey Mize. Casey Mize. And next... The last card in this pack, Andrew Vaughn. Andrew Vaughn. And it looks like we've got a hit in this one. USA All Star. Collegiate. National team. Baseball. Probably got the name on the bottom here, and I don't even know what this might be for sure. But it's a thicker card. That's why I'm assuming it's a hit. Drew Parrish. Left-handed pitcher. Silhouettes. Oh, wow. Look at it. It's an autograph memory. That is a cool-looking card. Drew Parrish. Sticker auto and a big, big patch there. Big, 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 big patch. Let me throw this in a... Penny sleeve. It says you can possibly get uh, some hits out of this. That was pretty cool. That's number 24 out of 199. <laughs> Kevin. Say every card the rest of the way is a diamond back. <laughs> it 
There he goes. This guy a diamond back there, Kevin. From Drew Parrish. <laughs> that's that's cute. All right. So we'll put these: Nico Horner, Andrew Vaughn, Casey Mize, and Drew Parrish. All right. So we'll set those here. <laughs> Frank's car could laugh out loud. All right. So moving into the middle pack. So at least it says, you know, we can get fine two autographs or memorabilia cards. So we might still have a chance to get another autograph. But that was an awesome, awesome little hit there. Have to see if that guy's made it into the big, big times yet. Last year, it looks like these were... So I guess this is from the, when they played college ball. Is that what it is? Anybody know for sure? Is that what these USA cards are? Is that from their their baseball playing in college? Um, Anthony Volpe. Anthony Volpe. They are shiny, shiny cards. You can see my... Kind of see me in the background there. All right. Anthony Volpe. Luke Leto. Luke Leto. Parker Kara Kar Karachi. Parker Karachi, Bobby Witt Jr., Bobby Witt Jr., and Shea Langoliers, Shea Langoliers, all right, so that takes care of that group there, I'll just set these behind here, three more packs to go, what's that? I'm just kidding. What are you kidding about now? <laughs> oh, Drew Parrish. <laughs> Drew, Drew Parrish is with the Diamondbacks. <laughs> is, is, is Frank's card corner rubbing off on you here? I think Frank's card corner must be rubbing off on... on uh... Oh, we do have... Uh... A different color card coming up here. Maybe it's another auto. Nolan Gorman. Nolan Gorman. Oh, maybe that's... Oh, that's probably another checklist card. Ryan Hawks. Ryan Hawks. Oh, no. That's not. But it's a different kind of card. Whoa, that's shiny for sure. All right. Samuel Dutton. Samuel Dutton. 40 years of USA. Is that 40 years of college ball? Then we've got here, we've got Anthony, or Andrew Painter. Andrew Painter. And John Doxicus. Doxicus. All right. Nolan Gorman. All right, so that's our five cards for that pack there. Yeah, Frank is a bad influence in this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you behave yourself now. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Next to the last pack, pack number six coming up here. All right. Oh, no, we've got another hit. We've got another hit coming up. Here. Here. I'm going to do this like this. That way our hit will be on the very bottom now. You can see it's another thick card. Another thick card coming up. Okay. Uh, Bryce Torig. Bryce Torig. Uh, Dylan Cruz. Dylan Cruz. An another Anthony Volp. We had him in the last pack there. Anthony Volp. And another Bobby Witt Jr. And our next and possibly last hit of the box is, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, this ain't the hit yet. So Bobby Witt and Josh Jung. Josh Jung. And now for our hit. I think this is the back of the card, so I'll have to turn it around when we figure out who it is. Jared. Jared Kelly. 
Jared Kelly. I think this must be another. Uh, this probably this one probably is not an autograph. He's a right-handed pitcher. The enclosed game used materials guaranteed by Pimpanini. And oh wow, that's a big patch. 39 of 171 for Jared Kelly. Oh, well, that's one big piece of the uniform there. They go overboard with their their memorabilia here, that is for sure. <laughs> big patches. All right, so big patches. Let me get another uh, sleeve here for this one. Another big patch there. Wow. JJK. Jumbo. Is that J for Jumbo patch, maybe? <laughs> USAAS. Silhouettes. All right. So we've got one more pack to go. Feels like a normal pack. Not so much in it. And then we'll get into our our top heritage here. All right. So without further ado, yep, looks like a normal final pack here. All right. So we did get our two hits. It says find two autographs or memorabilia cards. Well, we got two memorabilia's and an autograph, but that was a double. <laughs> cool there. So Zach Ness, Zach Ness, Travis Swaggerty, Travis Swaggerty. Oh, this one's different. This is the short print. It's a short print. 165 out of 249. It's a little bit, oh no, that one's, I guess this one's just a short print. I'll set this one aside. Then we've got uh, C.J. Abrams, C.J. Abrams, and Zach Watson. Zach Watson. There we go. So let's put these back in the back here. Yeah, that's almost the whole shirt. <laughs> whole big chunk of the shirt, that's for sure. So let me get one more uh, sleeve for this one. It's a short print. So these might be coming to an eBay store somewhere near you. These these memorabilia's here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this one's different. It's like red. Definitely a red type subset or something. Turang enjoyed a spectacular run with the USA Baseball 2017. He joined the program for the WBSC World Cup in Canada and bat at 353, hitting safely in all nine games while adding a pair of stolen bases to help him win the gold. All right, so there we have it. Put these right here. We've got, I guess you could say that's three hits in the box. That's not too bad. I have 35 cards. We've got a few that'll be heading toward Kevin. All right, Kevin, I'm going to throw these in your stack real quick here. Um, Corbin Carroll and Seth Beer. All right, you say they're with the Colorado Rockies now, so I'm going to send these two your way. All right, so I'm going to slide those over into your your holdout here. Being a Patreon member and stuff, those will be some bonus cards coming your way. So Bryce Turing, Drew Parrish, and Jared Kelly. Jared Kelly seems to ring a bell for me. But nonetheless, not too bad. Okay? I think overall, they're really sharp-looking cards. I do like the USA Baseball look on them. But I'm going to set these off to the side here. Going to set these off to the side. And we'll go from there. All right. And I'm going to put these 
off to the side also till I can figure out where I should put these or what I should do with them. All right. Okay, let me set these in the box over here out of the way. Those, are, I guess, could be possible prospects down the road. You never know. I'll put those as pre-rookie cards, pretty much. And now, without further ado, we're going to get into... Uh... Sorry, I'm just stuffing this stuff in the box and getting it out of the way here. All right. So now we will open up Tops Heritage. New products released fairly recently, I think. When was the Tops Heritage actually released? Last week, I think. I had my list of all the different top different products when they come out and stuff. But other than that, let's go ahead and see what we pull in this one. And then I can end my stream here in a little bit here. Of course, we've got, uh, what do we got in there? Seven packs plus a bonus pack. I don't know what the bonus pack is types they do in here. I don't know if they're chromes or refractors or what they actually call them. But um, I do thank Kevin for all the in my last package I got from him. He sent me a bunch of Topps coupons. So I was able to actually get these at $4 off a box by using the Topps coupons. Okay. So it doesn't look like that's where it says seven packs plus one extra pack. I don't know for sure why they call it one extra pack. I'm trying to think to see if you does anybody know if you actually get a different kind of pack or it's just eight packs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're just all they all basically look the same, I guess. What's that? Just a way of saying that you get one extra pack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, they just say eight packs instead of seven packs plus one extra pack. Does anybody know why they say it that way? You're hoping for an original 1971 diamond pack? Uh, go ahead and hold your breath, okay? We'll see. Kevin's just testing everybody that's in the stream, but there's only a few people here, so I don't think it'll be too many. But let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to set these right here. There we go. I'll move these back right about here. So if we get any good hits, we'll set them aside. So you do get nine cards in each one. It says Packs with a special insert card may contain only five to eight cards. And then here we go. I'll do this. I know I like to do it it's the first time I kind of show the product and stuff. I know a lot of people do. I'll put the odds here in case you want to go back and look at it later in case you haven't gotten any of this product yet. It does tell you how to do the no purchase necessary to send, a, send in an entry into their free drawing. But without further ado, let's go ahead and see what we can find in the Topps Heritage here. All right. 2019. Let's see. No, i got to scoot those over here. How's that sound? i got to have them out of my way here. I think that'll work better for me because I'm a, left, a lefty. Uh, 2019 Game 7 World Series. Kendrick plays hero with a clutch home run. All right, we got a San Diego Padres. All right, Will Myers. Los Angeles Dodgers, Ross Stripling. 2020 rookie stars, Sam Hilliard and Dom Nunez with the Colorado Rockies. A flashback cards. Willie Stargell reaches 30 home runs before the MLB All-Star game break. And then Red Sox, Raphael Devers. Uh, rookie Athletics, A.J. Put 
Seth Brown and Jesus Lazardo. And Jose Quintana with the Chicago Cubs. And Chris Davis with the Athletics. Alright, I guess we do have a couple of rookie cards that we pulled here. A flashback card. I'll set that up here for now. Another rookie. And a World Series insert card. I don't know if it's insert or... No, nope, they just number them regularly. But I'll separate them out with my... Kind of like my rookie stars and league leaders and stuff like that. Flashback card. 71 flashback. Would you prefer they say six packs? Six packs plus one pack with an extra bonus pack? Yeah, that would even mix it up even more. Six packs plus a bonus pack with an extra bonus pack. There we go. I like that. Uh-oh, we got some... Some different kind of card coming up here. You can see by this. Ooh, I don't know what they are for sure. Maybe that's the smaller ones they're talking about sometimes. Uh, Cleveland Indians, Jason Kipnis. Um, San Francisco Giants, Buster Posey. Philadelphia Phillies, Hector Neris. Cincinnati Reds, Derek Dietrich. And oh, this is one of those scratch. Oh, okay, that's what the answer was. But that's not a cool. That's a cool one to get, though. Vladimir Guerrero scratch scratch off card. Let me kind of show you what those are in case you've never seen these before. There's a little game you can play uh, with a friend or something like that. See if you score any runs and stuff. I like to just leave them open. But um, of course, where the fold is always. I mean, you can't really see anything there. But you kind of just take this, you scratch, uh, see the back of the card for instructions, and it tells you how to play the game. It says each player should have his own scratch-off card. So in other words, you, you need at least two of these to play with somebody, basically. Um, you rub an edge of coin over any black space. When three outs are scratched off, the next player gets their turn. Rules are the same as baseball. Play nine full innings if possible. So it just depends on if you have enough spaces here to play a full nine innings. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you get 44 spaces per card and you take turns back and forth. So it's kind of like a game you can play, but I would probably just take this, put it in a penny sleeve. I'm not going to scratch it off and stuff. I had a bunch of these last last year when I did get a couple of and I'll just put that scratch off right up here. It's a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. All right. The Braves Nick Markakis. All right. Andrew Kashner with the Boston Red Sox. Pablo Sandoval with the San Francisco Giants. And there we go, Carson Kelly. Carson Kelly. With the Arizona Diamondbacks there, Kevin. There you go. Carson Kelly. All right. So we'll set this one aside for now. I'll just put him right there for now. How's that sound? All right. So let's go in. We'll go into... Our next pack here. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> hoo-hoo, Kelly, hoo-hoo, Carson Kelly, hoo-hoo, Carson Kelly. <laughs> All right, Ryan McMahon with the Colorado Rockies. Um, Tyler Bede with the San Francisco Giants. All right, Tampa Bay Rays rookies, Brendan McKay and Mike Brousseau. St. Louis Cardinals, Tommy Edmond. Um, Julio Urias with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, California Angels, Griffin Canning. Baltimore Orioles, Austin Hay. And Clint Frazier. Clint Frazier with the New York Yankees. 
And last but not least, Jack Flaherty with the St. Louis Cardinals. It's not too bad. It's kind of like an interesting design. It's 1971. All right. Pack number three with four more packs to go. Does I always, I'm always intrigued, and I like the backs of the cards. You know, where you can see the stats, the information about the, you know, Chris joined forces with the team and local charities to donate over $15,000 in 2019 to a Pittsburgh Children's Baseball Association. The money was used for bats, gloves, catcher's gear, and helmets for the teams. So that is pretty cool when they do, like, uh, fundraisers. They tell you what how they get involved with the community which is kind of nice so Matt Boyd pitcher for the Detroit Tigers um, Colton Wong with the St. Louis Cardinals Tampa Bay Rays Emilio Pagan all right Indians Jose Ramirez third baseman there we go. New Age Performers. Jose Barrios with the Minnesota Twins. It's probably a subset, isn't it? Oh, I gotta look for the short prints. The short prints are 400 and up. That's right. New Age Performers. So I'll go through afterwards at the end and see which ones are the short prints. Uh, Andrelton Simmons with the California Angels. Uh, Washington Nationals, Andrew Stevenson. And then uh, I guess double check to make sure which one's the action ones. Uh, there's a game two for the 2019 World Series. Suzuki comes through with a blast. Okay. That one right there is a World Series subset card. And Chris Archer with the Pittsburgh Pirates. 311. That's the one we highlighted when I opened it up. Let me just look real quick and see if we see any of the short prints. I do see they have, see the different color backings? I don't know if that makes any much of a difference. See if there's any 400 or higher. Oh, there's a, Urias is a short print. There we go. I don't I don't think you can notice it from the fronts of the cards that I can think of. But I guess Urias is a short print. Just kind of put that one in a penny sleeve for now. So I know that that one was definitely identified as a short print. None of those that I noticed said any, didn't have action on them anywhere. None of those are short print rookie cards. All right, we're in the middle of the box. Pack number four. Well, it's not an original. <laughs> I didn't say we couldn't find a Diamondback, just not an original 1971 Diamondback. Jose Asuna. All right, let's just uh, here. Let's do it, do it this way real quick. See if we can find some of those. No short prints in here. So the Pirates, Jose Asuna. Um, New York Yankees, Luke Voigt, first base. Um, Austin Romine with the, with the Yankees. Joey Lucchesi with the, Pir the, with the San Diego Padres. There, Kevin. Um, Zach Ples Plesak with the Indians. There we go. Uh... 2019 American League Championship Series. Next stop, World Series. For the Houston Astros. Put that one down there for now. Uh, Junior Guerrero with the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, Oscar Mercado with the, the Cleveland Indians. And Brandon Crawford with the San Francisco Giants. All right. 
pack number five in the in the box. Pack number five. J.P. Crawford on the back. Let's see. Any 400? There's a... Oh, there you go. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. short print. No actions. So let's get this Vladdy into a penny sleeve for now. It's a gold cup. Gold cup Vladimir Guerrero Jr. There we go. Put him on the bottom of the stack there with a... Actually, hold on. Just face it, face him this way. Here, I'll kind of put him up there for now. The short prints. All right, and then go back in here. No action shots or action, whatever it is they say on these things. Mike Clevenger with the Indians. Uh, Robinson Cano with the Mets. Johnny Cuto with the Giants. Scott Oberg with the Colorado Rockies. Hanser Alberto with the Baltimore Orioles. Juan Langares with the New York Mets. John Gray with the Colorado Rockies. And J.P. Crawford with the Seattle Mariners. My first Seattle Mariner to pull in the Heritage. I don't even know if I got any out of Jonathan's break the other day. It wasn't all wasn't too clear the feed, but at least it was it was a good 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 box opening. Yes, good Vladimir Guerrero, team captain. All right, let's see any short prints in here. Uh oh. Oh, uh, another one of those news break ones. No short prints here. Okay. So um, we got Renato Nunez with the Baltimore Orioles. Byron Buxton with the Minnesota Twins. All right, Seattle Mariners, Tom Murphy. There we go. Got my second Seattle Mariner. Justin Wilson with the Mets. Flashbacks. There we go. Flashbacks. America gets mobile on the moon. <laughs> oh, mobile. Put that one right there for now. Don't want to cover up that sec that other Vladimir Guerrero Jr. we got. Javier Baez with the Cubs. Um, National League ERA leaders. Jacob DeGrom, Mike Soroka, and Hyunjin Ryu. National League RBI leaders, Anthony Rendon, Freddie Freeman, and Pete Alonzo. And Brad Peacock, Astros pitcher. All right. So one more pack to go. Last pack in the box. And the winner is... Nothing major in these boxes. All right. Oh, let me check for uh, short prints. Oh, we got a short with a different type of short print. Probably our hit in the box in the box. Doesn't say does it say you get any kind of hit or anything? Doesn't say look for a real one autograph and relic cards. So maybe we got an auto or a relic coming up. We will see in just a second here. It's right about in the middle of the stack here. Matter of fact, let me just uh I think it might be this one. Yeah, I think so. So we'll put it all the way at the back there. Yomer Sanchez with the White Sox. All right. American League Championship Series. Gliber drives in five runs. All right. And then uh, Tampa Bay Rays, Willie Adamas. Jake Lamb. There we go, Jake Lamb. With the the snakes, I mean the Arizona Diamondbacks. <laughs> there we go. So let's put this one right over here. Yep, he's he's not gonna stand up there, Kevin. 
There we go. We'll get him. We'll get Jake Lamb right there for you for now. All right. Um, Milwaukee Brewers, Orlando Arcia. Uh, Na Washington Nationals, Patrick Corbin. Minnesota Twins, Jose Barrios. And Washington Nationals, Sean Doolittle. So let's see. What do we got here? Oh, is this a. Uh, New York Mets, J.D. Davis, Heritage, and the winner is, who is it, who is it, somebody at the bat, is that Chris Davis with the Cubbies, Chris Davis maybe with the Cubbies, and the winner is, J.D. Davis, not Chris Davis, but I don't know. I guess it's just a, a short print refractor type, I guess. I chose it is 946 out of 999. Let me get that in a penny sleeve for now. Since that is a serial numbered card, I don't think it's an autograph or anything that I can tell. But it is a sharp little shiny card. A sharp little shiny card. Let me set that one right there for now. Get the league leaders here. The RBI leaders, ERA leaders, and three rookie cards. Set them here. Got another Seattle Mariner here. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> All right. So let me put that right there. Go through and highlight. I don't think. Did I check this left, this one here for any short prints? I can't remember for sure. I don't think there were any short prints in that one either. No, I think I've gone way down far enough to check. So no more short prints there. Just a few short prints there. The Vladimir Guerrero is a short print. Those look like basic cards right there. But we did find a, that's my lamb impression. Oh, ba ba ba, for your Jake Lamb. All right. So let's set these two aside for, for uh, my Diamondback fan. All right. Set these over to the side here. We got our rookies. We got the two Vladimir Guerreros that we did find. These two Vladdy Daddies here. Not Vladdy Daddy, but Vladdy Jr. <laughs> Not the Vladdy Daddies. All right. And then we did get the J.D. Davis. Uh, short print, serialized. 946 out of 999. Okay. We'll set that one right there. And then, of course, we've got these... Uh, We got the flashback. The, the Willie Stargell reaches 30 home runs. The New Age Jose Barrios with the Twins. Then we had this uh, short print here along with the uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Julius Urias with the Dodgers. And then last but not least, we've got these guys here. The the. 2019 Game 1 American League Championship. Gliber drives in five runs. We got the Astros celebrate the 2019 American League Championship Series. Next stop, World Series. World Series Game 2 and Game 7. And the flashback. America gets mobile on the moon. The back of that card, of course, tells you everything about that one. Okay. So other than that, that's pretty much what I have for everybody today. Not a bad box for sure. So we did go over two hours, but that's fine. I had fun. Hopefully you guys had fun. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate that. Let me scooch these up just a little bit here. These guys can go up over here. The two Arizona Diamondbacks can go right over here. 
till I put them in a separate separation here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks, Stephen Cards, for being here. Kevin's Card Collecting. Um, I believe we might be it. Well, no, that says there's five people in the stream. But some I know are just watching, probably at work. Thanks uh, for Paul D. being here. Stephen's Cards. Kevin's Card Collecting. Um, and the such. So hopefully you guys have a great day. Um, hopefully you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Wherever you might be in the country. It's cloudy and wet and rainy here. Hopefully it's not that way in your neck of the woods. Uh, that's fun. See you later. I'll be live later on today. Probably around 4 o'clock. Okay, we'll see if I can pop on before before our guests come over tonight there, Kevin. If not, I hope you will understand why I might not be in your live stream. But we'll see what happens down the road. But if at all possible, I will jump on with you at 4 o'clock. I don't believe our dinner guests are going to be here till about 5 o'clock or so. So I can probably pop into your stream just a little bit while I'm helping my wife downstairs get ready for dinner and our dinner guests so without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and get ready to say goodbye for now you guys have a great and wonderful days no worries if you can't thanks there kevin thanks for the understanding but um you guys have a great and wonderful day let me um reposition my camera here for a second without disturbing anything on the table and get ready to say goodbye everybody there we go all right so this is Don Blondahl Hall of Fame veteran sports cards and collectibles having been live from Arlington Washington with you this morning got my different kind of Seattle Mariner new age type hat shows the outline of the state of Washington there uh, got this out of a, uh, the local outlet mall one of the shops was going out of business, so I was able to get a bargain on a couple new baseball caps. So hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and a good day. You guys take care, and I'm going to get ready to go downstairs and see if my wife needs some help. I know i got to do some vacuuming around the house, get that all ready for her. So you guys have a great and wonderful day, and we will see you guys around. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you guys around the channels. Bye now. Take care.